Hey there, Sparkers. Welcome to another episode of Tips and Tricks. In this episode, we'll be covering how to make scrolling text just like movie credits. It's quite simple, actually. We're going to be able to do that in just 18 lines of code. We're going to have three scrolling columns for a title, names, and contributions. After this video, feel free to customize, play around with the font size, positioning, etc. So let's get started. So you can see I just have a uh, blank world just started from scratch here. Um, I actually don't even need a character for this, uh, for this episode, so I'm going to just delete him. And we do need something to put the logic in, so let me uh, bring in a logic cube real quick here. Just search for that in the gallery. There it is, so I'll drop that there. All right, and going into its brain, it's totally empty. So where do we start with this? So like a lot of things in Project Spark, we're actually gonna start with a, uh, by creating a new Boolean variable. Um, so boolean is just a it's a variable type that is either true or false so it's kind of like an on and off switch uh, so the new one we're going to be making is going to be called roll credits so this is going to be used to let us know um, when to stop and start uh, the credits from rolling makes pretty good sense there more importantly all the logic of um, that controls the display and like the scrolling of the credits um, that'll happen underneath this boolean so that's why we need that uh, first thing we want to do is actually uh, make sure this guy is initialized um, I like to initialize all my variables um, and what I mean by that is set it to a value uh, right off the bat when the game gets started and I don't want this to be true I you know the usually there's a game before credits roll or some kind of situation before you uh, take input from the care uh, from the player to display credits so we don't want that to be right away so I'm gonna set that equal to false we want to make sure that only happens one time so only ones uh, runs one frame at the very beginning of the game so we'll put that like that and just for this example I need something to trigger the credits uh, in this case we're gonna just use a button press and I'm using a controller so I'll do a pressed and we'll set that boolean to true. And then we also want a uh, situation where we can trigger that off as well. So let's do another line. I'll just copy that over. Let's switch that to B. So when B press, we'll say roll credits equals to false. And that's just good to have uh, for testing purposes through this. All right. So here's uh, the Boolean for when this is true. We're gonna do a bunch of things. So let's nest a child line under here. So this will only these lines will only run after uh, roll credits is true. So first thing first, uh, we want to actually initialize some variables underneath roll credits. So we're gonna be using at screen position a lot. It's a tile that's very handy for displaying things on screen. Um, and we need to uh, decide, uh, initialize some of those uh, variables. Uh, so at screen position uses vector variables to do that. So I'm going to actually be creating uh, uh, three new vector variables. So to do that, I'm going to go to values, vector, and then new vector variable. And let's call the first one title column. So this is going to be a position on screen that I uh, want to display um, a title for my credits. And uh, so with vectors, you have uh, on screen in particular, there's going to be two components. So there's only an X and a Y. Uh, y axis is up and down, and X axis is uh, left and right. And you can think of uh, top being one and bottom being negative one of the screen. And same for X. So uh, all the way to the right is one, and all the way to the left is negative one. So title, I actually want this to be right in the center of the screen uh, from on the left to right axis, so that's the x-axis. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. When I start that, do a new line. And I also want to make sure I set the y component as well. And I want this, so uh, with scrolling text, uh, I'm going to actually have this display and it's going to come up onto the screen and so what's great is on those axes that I mentioned from the one to negative one you can actually go lower than that but you just won't see it but it'll actually um, if you're changing its position and it can actually move on to screen so we're gonna actually set it uh, um, at the bottom basically 
So let's go here to map and negative and let's just do one. So let's set it right at one. And we're gonna actually do another two uh, variables here we're gonna initialize. So let's do a new vector variable. There we go. Let's call this name column. And the X for this one, uh, we're going to kind of do a style where it's just a little bit off center. Um, and names are going to be on the left in this case. Uh, you'll know what I mean when we get to the toward the end here. I'll make sure that's negative. So we're heading toward the left a little bit. That's why I need that negative. And a good number I found from testing this out was 0 0.03. So this 0 0.03 dictates how far from the center of the screen the text actually is. So we'll put that there. And we also need to do a Y component as well. And let's start to start this uh, lower than um, my title column. I figure I want my title to be first, and then just after that, I want these uh, this information to start showing up. So the other one was at negative one, and we want this lower. So let's go negative 1.2. So the difference there is that 0.2. So that'll help us uh, keep uh, these two columns separated, the title column and the name column. And we have one more vector to initialize here. So let's go to vector, new vector, variable, and let's call this contribution column. So think of this as the, the column right next to the name that lets uh, lets the player know what this person did. So I could, you know, if this person was a voice actor, I could put the name of the character they played. If they were a level designer, I could put that. Um, so that's what this column is going to be for. Uh, the X component of this is going to be the actual just opposite of the negative 0 0.03. So we'll just do positive 0 0.03 here. And so it'll be, there'll be uh, a little blank space right in the middle of the, of the column. And then we also need to do a Y. We want this to be the same as the name column because they're going to line up together on screen. Uh, they're going to be right next to each other um, when you think up and down. So this is going to stay at negative 1.2. All right. So these guys are all nested under to the started to. So these are going to set be set uh, these positions every single time uh, this boolean becomes true just and this ensures that it runs only one frame okay so let's add a new line here I don't want this to be dis, uh, to be nested underneath started to because I want this to run for multiple frames I want it to run as long as roll credits is true so uh, with credits usually there's a, a black background uh, very typical in movies uh, you can also be more fancy and do your own custom back backgrounds maybe an assembly screenshot or something with the camera uh, just for this case we're going to display a totally black screen um, one of the easiest ways to do that is to actually use an icon and I just like to go to the icon gallery here and pull up a square and there's two different kinds I use the bigger one and I set that to a color. I want pure black, which pure black, uh, if you just go to new color and just find one of the bottom corners, that'll be pure black, which is zero, 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 one. Um, at least that, that'll be the numbers that pop up for you there. We wanna make sure this covers the full screen. So let's do a scale of 10. So that just multiplies the size of that by 10. So we'll make sure we cover the screen there. Last but not least, we need to give it a position. And let's just do positioning, screen location, screen center. So now we know it'll be a, a giant black square that's the size of 10 times itself and it starts at screen center. So that should cover the full screen. All right, so displaying the actual text now, how do we do that? So if I go uh, on uh, do side and I go to appearance display, let's uh, let's get the title on there first. So if I go values text, new text, we can enter a new one. 
So let's just do uh, title and we'll call it credits. I'm going to put a little title there just so we can see how that displays um, and we know that's the title. So we'll put it like that. Then let's choose where we want to position this. So positioning, and we're going to actually use this tile right here, at screen position. So the purpose of using all these vector variables and setting where they're at is because now I can reference this in my display. So now it's going to know what screen position that is. So how do I actually create the scrolling that we see in movie credits? Well, that position updates as it goes across the screen, right? Um, as you as it moves across, that position changes. So we can actually change this position dynamically. And we want this to uh, be always happening and be pretty smooth. So in order to keep it smooth, we want it to run every single frame. So to do that, we're actually going to keep the one side empty. And that will mean it's running always when, uh, when this Boolean is true. Roll credits. So let's put title column. We're going to copy over that vector variable and look at the vector components. So vector component Y is its um, where it's positioned on the uh, up and down axes. So we want that. And then we can go to math, then increment by. So this will increase, increment by will increase this position um, by a certain amount every frame that this is running. And I found the value of point, make sure I get the right one here, point zero zero five to be a very good number for incrementing that. All right. So next we need to do the other two columns. So I'm going to take a little shortcut here and I'll copy that over. Let's change this to, let's do the name first. And change the text. Let's do name and let's do Thomas. And we also need to increment this. And so we want all of our scrolling to be the same. That's going to be really important to make it uh, look unified and all together. And so, and their positions related to each other don't uh, change as they're scrolling up the screen. So that will also be 0 0.005. All right, and one last display to put on here. And this is going to be the contribution column. So this is what Thomas did. So let's say, let's make a new text. And we'll say creator. And last but not least, we need to make sure this also scrolls by the same amount, 0 0.005. So one last thing, um, we kind of want to make this look a little bit fancy and uh, look exactly like movie credits. So when you think of movie credits, they're kind of nicely aligned with the, the center column and they kind of branch out from that. Um, so in order to do that in our example here is you find the display lines. So in this case, this is my name column and that's on the, the left hand side of the, of the credit scroll. So what I want to do is go to modifiers, and then I'm going to look for positioning, and then I'm looking for two different things. I need HUD justification. And since this is actually on uh, the left side, um, but if you think about uh, it's to, so it's to the left of the center, um, but its right edge is the one where we want everything lined up on. So we want to say justify to the right. And then we also want to go to positioning and text alignment also to the right. And on the other, uh, other column that we have, we're going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to look for positioning, HUD justification to the left, and modifiers, positioning, text alignment, and alignment to the right, or excuse me, to the left. So with both of those things, it'll nicely put, um, based on our vector positions, uh, this text. So let's go to test and see how this all looks together. So I'm going to press A on my controller to roll credits. So you can see the title there. And then the name column with Thomas. And on the 
right side contribution and creator. And so that's just going to scroll up. It's going to actually scroll all the way past the screen and just going to keep scrolling. Now if I hit B, it actually uh, cancels out that Boolean, um, but because I nested all my initialization underneath the, um, the roll credits Boolean, I can hit A again and it's going to start up. So I can uh, start and stop whenever I want. So to make this look just a little bit more credits, uh, how would I go about adding um, a bunch more people onto this? So if I find my two display lines here, I can actually go and let's go to math, and I can use plus to start adding some things. Then under value text, text, I can find new line, and that'll make sure it skips a line. So let's do some new text. So let's say uh, a new name here. Let's go Brian. And let's say that Brian's contribution was video editor. And let me uh, edit this guy too, just so it looks a little bit cleaner. Now that we very clear that that's the contribution, I'll take that out. And edit this one, I'll take name out. And on the title too. take that out and let's add let's add one more let's copy the new line one more plus um, I'll do that in a second let me add the name up here and let's do values text new uh, new text, let's say Charles. And Charles's contribution, let's say uh, Achievement Hunter. Cool. So let's run that all together. Test. So you can see how all those columns are neatly aligned. Uh, so the left column, they're all justified to the right side. And on the, the right column on the contribution side, they're all adjusted to the left. So you can go through and customize that however you want, where they're all um, with you know different subtitles and things like that, and you know different columns that you'd like to add, probably like a title one, two, three, um, and all the different you know contributors. So uh, any of your bigger projects where you're you know borrowing things from new people's creations or from using stuff from starter kits it's always great to credit original authors um, so i look forward to seeing um, people take this up and use it in their creations uh, i will see you guys in the next episode thanks project spark is where players create and creators play what better way to be inspired than to see what's possible this will surely spark your imagination. Now, how do we begin?